Hi everyone, we are the team Detector Vision. I'm Mehdi Hassan. I'm Vishal Nakanti. I'm Andrew Waska. And I'm Abin George. And in this project, we'll be doing a real time object detection uh, using FPGA board. We try to um, implement it for a high speed, low latency object uh, detection and tracking um, project. And like uh, this applications of this project can be in robotics, surveillance, and automated manufacturing. So uh, as for the system overview, we'll have an object and we'll do a real time um, video of that object and we'll send that video to the FPGA board for image processing and we'll send the processed image um, to the visualization in, uh, uh, in form of some like uh, screens or something. So for the system specification, we have um, do the simulations in Nexus A7 FPGA board that is available in the lab. But for the demo, we'll be using Basis 3. We, are all, we have also used EPS32 cam microcontroller. We have used um, OV7670 camera. We have also used a PC. As for the FPGA peripherals, we, are, we have used UART, VGA, VRAM, and FIFA registers. So the goal of this project is to achieve real-time image processing without significant lag. And we try to enhance the performance while using uh, minimized memory. So the camera is actually developed in two different ways. The first method is we use an ESP32 camera along with a PC to communicate as the middleman to communicate through UART to an FPGA. The image is taken. It is then processed. The ESP32 cam actually creates JPEGs. It converts it into a bitmap, and it sends the image to the FPGA. So for our other method, we use the OV7670, which uses a very similar protocol to the I squared C. And that plugs directly into the FPGA rather than having a middleman, which comes out in FPGA resolution. Here are some example images taken by the ESP32 cam. And then we have the image processing port. So here's just a quick overview. We have uh, FIFO buffers and BRAM to store the pixels. And we have three main modules for the processing. Wayscale, uh, color masking that's all combined to one, edge detection and hue transform. And we use the, for the memory, we use two IPs from Vivado. So um, as for the image processing, the first thing that you need to do is to do the grayscaling. But in our project, we're not just doing grayscaling. We're also having a parallel um, pipeline for color masking. So the reason we're using color masking is because we already know the color of the object. So we, we're trying to focus on that color and um, remove all other un unnecessary part. Uh, later, we'll combine the color masking and the grayscaling together to get the uh, final thing that would be put uh, sent, sent to the later part of the uh, project. The next step is the edge detection. So for edge detection, we, we're using a Sobel edge detector. So essentially, we look at the point we're trying to find the edge at. We take eight pixels surrounding that point, that's that pixel, and then we run it through this Sobel function module. Essentially, all these eight pixels are moving in parallel. You run a convolutional operator on it to find the change or the threshold of the edge of that particular pixel. So here's an example. That was their initial image. And here's the edged image. And then for hue transform, this is what we use to find the object. So here we start with a pixel. We move to a radius R. We check if that pixel is edged. If it is, we add one to the accumulator. And then we repeat this for the next three pixels surrounding uh, the pixel of our interest. And then we check if the accumulator is the maximum. If it is, we choose the new point as our center. And now everything together, this is all the simulation results. We have the camera, grayscale, uh, edge detection. We find the position, and then we output the pixel to the VGA and visual output section. So now as we got the position figures, we have to display them on the screen. So there are two main functionalities. One is uh, synchronizing the signal with the VGA screen, which where we use uh, VSync and sync for synchronization. Uh, which uh, is used for printing the pixels. Then after printing the pixels, you have to check the areas which comes under the positions which you got from the algorithm. And we check the positions which come, come comes under it and we color those pixels. And for the simulation, uh, we are expecting uh, 
position uh, of the ball uh, which has the colored uh, colored pixels uh, which represents the position of the ball so this is the simulation result to test it uh, we have uh, integrated it with the fpga model uh, where we have kept the inputs as, as x and y positions and when we toggle them uh, we can see the uh, position of the ball uh, changing on the vga display So there is no system without its trade-offs. So we were talking about using a basis three board for our actual implementation and our Nexus 7 for our simulations. The basis three actually has reduced memory capacity, but we chose the basis three because we have ready access to it. The ESP32 CAM is combined with a microcontroller, which allows us to more easily integrate our system with other systems to control the camera. The camera resolution on the SP32 cam is also higher to two megapixel camera, which is a lot higher than per se the VGA on the OV7670. Our frame rate is also reduced because of the buffer caused by the SP32 going through the PC. And the image format being converted from a JPEG to a bitmap also creates a conversion time requirement. So this is where we were before. We had three separate modules each one doing its individual tasks. All of this was simulated on the Arctic 7, Nexus 7, sorry, uh, FPGA board, which is uh, available in our labs. What we accomplished so far in the last few days is connecting all these modules. So in the next slide, you'll see how our system looks. Essentially, the goal is still the same, but because we are running this on the basis three FPGA board, we had less memory to work with. So we had to move things around the algorithm is still the same. The output is still the same. And then we have three uh, outputs that we can view, the grayscale image, the edge image, and the visual output that tracks where the ball is moving. And we can toggle between them using these switches. One disclaimer, the images that we see here are purely from simulation. Uh, the final image or the running of the fully integrated model can be seen in our uh, demo video, which we'll, which we'll do shortly. That should be all. Thank you all for listening. And now on to the live Hello demo. there. I'm Aiden. I'm part of the Team Detective Vision. And here's the live demo of our project. So essentially, we have the FPGA board here, the camera, and the visual output. So the initial mode is just showing grayscale. So here you can see me. Yep. And you can also see Vishal right there. Hi. <laughs> awesome. And then the first, that first mode we have is using the switch. It goes into the edge detection mode. So here we can see all the edges being detected. Uh, and here I have a cube with me. Detects the edges. And then the second mode is a red hue on it. So essentially it only detects red color. So there's a lot of noise. But here you can see if I move this around, you can see that red dye being picked up. There we go. So that's the three on the die. And the last step is the uh, object detection mode. So here Vishal will change the button. So as you can see, the object it detected is around the same position as I move right, it moves right too. It is very noisy, uh, but the general gist of it is there. Thank you, Professor Densmore. Thank you all for listening. Um, so just a final notes. There is a lot of noise, which is why our system doesn't work to its potential, to what we imagined it would be. So in the future, if we had to redo this, I think one thing we'd change is uh, applying or adding a filter to denoise it. But that should be all. Thank you all for listening. Bye.